We're back for my favorite video of the month, August's monthly build. We've got a table full of new parts to work with here, and I have high hopes for both performance and aesthetics, so let's not waste any time and get right to it. Deepcool's got you covered for premium all-in-one liquid coolers with the new Castle 240EX. Featuring their exclusive anti-leak bladder technology, your components have never been safer from accidental water damage. A three-phase motor and pressure-changing impeller is their most powerful ever while being almost inaudible, and of course, you get the awesome look of addressable RGB effects on the pump top, which also includes a customizable logo chip. Check out the link below to learn more. If you like what I do here on this channel, please consider getting subscribed and hitting that little notification bell down there. I also have a merch store at bpscustoms.com, so consider supporting my one-man show if you like the content. For August, every component that's going into this system is something that I've never worked with before, with the exception of one thing, and that's the memory, so we might as well start there. This, right down here, is Gigabyte's Aorus RGB memory, and while it may look like we're dealing with a 4x8 Gigabyte kit of DDR4-3200, actually Gigabyte is one of the few companies producing four DIMM kits, with only two being active memory. The other two are actually dummy sticks, made to look the same and light up and look all pretty, but without any actual memory modules on them. This way you can get the look of having all of your memory banks full without actually having to pay double the cost. A pretty slick move if you ask me. Circling back to our new stuff and starting at the top, the case for today's project is Fantex's new P400A. They introduced this enclosure at Computex and it's just hitting the market with a street price of around $90. It carries over a lot of the original P400 traits, but now comes with three ARGB fans up front and a full mesh grill to improve airflow. This white version looks great right out of the box and I hope that the build experience is as smooth as I've experienced with other Fantex cases. I wanted to use a motherboard that kind of would seamlessly flow from the case's black and white lines down into our mainly darker interior components, so I chose ASUS's Prime X570 Pro. X570 boards in general are not cheap, but this one comes in at least on the lower half of the spectrum at around $230. Still though, you get the same VRM design as on their Strix boards, a fixed IO shield and decent overclocking support even on the higher end Ryzen third generation processors like the 3900X. But we won't be using one of those today because this is going to be a, maybe a mid to upper mid range gaming system that uses what I think will be AMD's best selling Ryzen 3000 series chip, the 3600X. It has the same core and thread configuration as previous Ryzen 5s with six cores and 12 threads, so still plenty of horsepower for productivity tasks, streaming, encoding, or multitasking, but the clock speeds and IPC are way up on this generation. In pre-testing, while running some games, I was seeing sustained clock speeds between 4.2 and 4.3 gigahertz, a significant improvement for AMD in a very short time. I also don't plan on overclocking our CPU because, to be honest, Precision Boost Overdrive does such a good job on its own and there's very little benefit to manual overclocking when you consider all the extra heat and power you'll have to deal with. But speaking of heat, that'll be the job of the CryoRig H7 Quad Lumi, a great little tower air cooler that's unfortunately becoming harder to find now that CryoRig is kind of slowly pulling back on the US market. You can still find them out there, but you might pay a price premium, so just be careful. The Quad Lumi should provide us plenty of cooling for our 95 watt Ryzen chip, and it looks great while doing so with an RGB top plate. As I stated before, I did do some pre-testing with this hardware to make sure that it does all work, and clearly, I left the cooler in place. So we won't be looking at that as a part of our build montage this time around. For our storage needs, Patriot has hooked us up with their new P200 SSD in the one terabyte flavor. It's been a while since I've built with a SATA SSD as the market gets more crowded with NVMe drives, but to be honest, most people still use drives like this or even mechanical ones, and they're still plenty fast, achieving transfer speeds in excess of 500 megabytes per second. We still need something to game with, and for this month, that'll be Gigabyte's new RTX 2070 Super Gaming OC. 
The 2070 Super is something that I tested when it first came out, but I haven't yet looked at any partner models. This OC version runs at a higher base and boost clock and will take advantage of Gigabyte's tried and true WinForce style cooler. So it should be both cooler and quieter than the reference design. At a little over $500, it encroaches on RTX 2080 performance territory, and it's a great choice for any gamer. And powering everything will be this little number from Fractal Design, their new Ion Plus 80 Plus Platinum rated fully modular power supply. This might be a little overkill both in wattage and efficiency, but 760 watts isn't that outlandish, and it gives us a little bit of room for the system to grow and expand in the future if we wanted to. Plus it has some neat features like a fan stop mode so it runs completely silent when not under load. And that's everything, I think. So it's time for that build montage, let's go. Did we get what we expected from our August monthly build? I'd actually say we may have exceeded expectations here. The P400A is one sweet looking case and the fact that it comes with a bunch of fans and RGB lighting and still costs under $100 is very appealing. I didn't run into any significant snags at all while building in this case and I like having access to the little features that Fantex has become known for, like these small accessory doors that can be used as mounts, pass-throughs, or whatever you want. Fitment was basically perfect all the way around and I would build in this case again and I might actually do that. The Ryzen 5 3600X and RTX 2070 Super seem like they're the perfect match of price and performance. While a $500 GPU can hardly be considered budget, you get what you pay for and it was churning out frames at 1440p in every game at the rate of an RTX 2080. It paired perfectly with the six core chip, and the higher clock speeds made it so that we weren't lagging behind Intel here in any reasonable way. 
I did apply an overclock to the 2070 Super, increasing the core by 110 megahertz and the memory by 950. This left us with average clock speeds of 2055 megahertz after a 30 minute Unigine heaven loop. While gaming, we saw GPU temps of about 60C and CPU temps really down low, but when we stressed the CPU, we got up to about 74, both of which were, are within spec and with plenty of headroom to play with. The stock performance of the 3600X is just stellar, and it does so without generating much heat. The cryo rig cooler did a really good job, although maybe it is a little bit louder. I'm not sure if the mic is picking it up, but I could definitely hear it. I think it was definitely helped by the fact that there are three intakes at the front just shoving air back into both of those components, so they have plenty of fresh air to deal with. If you guys are looking for the perfect 1440p high performance gaming system, this might be it right here. You can go more expensive on some components, sure. The cooler could be an AIO and maybe it'd be a little bit quieter or you could use an NVMe SSD or even upgrade to a 12 core CPU, but you certainly don't need to. And this is a great way to get your gaming fix and will remain viable for at least the next few years. I hope you guys enjoyed August monthly build. If you did and you wanna see more of this type of content, let me know down below in the comments and don't forget to get subscribed as well. Also, if you're looking for any of the parts featured here, check the links down below. Thanks for watching guys and I will see you next time.